You know what's kind of wild, Gabby? The oil we use to cook our fries, wings, or donuts. Stuff we'd normally just toss out is now being turned into fuel for cars and trucks. In the search for cleaner, greener energy, used cooking oil has gone from kitchen waste to fuel tanks. It's called biodiesel, and it burns cleaner than regular fuel. The greasy leftover cooking oil can make a pretty big impact. It's really kind of amazing, Liam. I mean, who would have thought that what's left in a frying pan could help cut down on pollution? But turning used cooking oil into fuel isn't just a cool idea anymore. It's real science, and it's already happening around the world. It might just be part of the future of clean energy. I mean, think about it. French fries, crispy chicken, onion rings, samosas. Even burgers sometimes hit the fryer. Cooking oil is everywhere. Honestly, we can't imagine a day without it in some form. It's such a huge part of what we eat, especially with all the deep-fried goodness out there. That's why cooking oil production is a massive global industry. But here's the thing. While we're producing and using tons of it, the part where we recycle that used oil into fuel, that's still a much smaller game. The idea's been around for a while, but only in recent years has the actual large-scale production of biodiesel really started gaining momentum. And here's where it gets even better, Gabby. Biodiesel made from used cooking oil isn't just smart, it's seriously cleaner. Compared to regular diesel, it can cut carbon monoxide by almost half, slash particulate matter by 47%, and drop hydrocarbons by over 60%. That's huge for air quality. Plus, using this waste oil means we're tackling two problems at once, cutting down pollution and finding a use for something we'd normally throw away. Right, Liam. And to really appreciate the impact, it helps to understand a bit of the science behind how used cooking oil turns into biodiesel. Most cooking oils, like canola, soybean, sunflower, and olive oil, are made up of about 95 to 98% triglycerides. These are large, thick molecules that aren't suitable for regular diesel engines because they're just too viscous. They'd clog things up and cause damage over time. That's where a process called transesterification comes in. It's a chemical reaction where these triglycerides are broken down and converted into much smaller molecules called fatty acid methyl esters, or FAME for short. That's what we call biodiesel. It behaves much more like regular diesel fuel and can be used in most diesel engines, sometimes even without any modifications. Transesterification is the key process that allows us to convert used cooking oil into biodiesel, rather than simply throwing it away. It's a great example of how chemistry and sustainability can work hand in hand to address real world challenges. It aligns well with the principles of a circular economy, where waste products like used cooking oil are repurposed into valuable resources. But that makes me wonder, can biodiesel like FAME actually be used in the aviation industry? Great question, Gabby. So, while biodiesel, or FAME as it's technically called, is awesome for road transport, it's actually not used as sustainable aviation fuel. And that's mostly because of how planes operate. First off, biodiesel has a pretty high freezing point, usually around zero degrees Celsius. Wait a minute, this could be a serious problem. How cold does it get at the altitudes where airplanes fly? I mean, it's definitely well below zero degree up there. And at those temperatures, biodiesel would freeze. Absolutely right. The sweet spot for commercial flights is 35,000 feet, where temperatures can drop to minus 40 degrees Celsius or even lower. That could cause the fuel to gel up mid-flight, and no one wants that. Then there's the energy density. Biodiesel has slightly less energy per unit than jet fuel, which means planes would either have to carry more fuel or sacrifice range, not ideal for long flights. And finally, jet engines just aren't built to run on biodiesel. It can cause clogging, carbon deposits, and thermal issues. So while fame isn't suitable for aviation, it does play a role in the bigger picture. We'll get into that next. That makes total sense. Safety and performance are everything when it comes to flying. But now I'm curious, if fame biodiesel isn't the answer for aviation, 
What is being used to make sustainable aviation fuel? Is it still coming from the same kind of waste oils? Exactly, Gabby. The feedstocks are often the same. Used cooking oil, animal fats, even industrial grease. But the process to turn them into aviation fuel is totally different. So what are you saying? Instead of biodiesel, are we talking about something more advanced? Yep, that's right. One of the most common production pathway is called HEFA, hydro-processed esters and fatty acids. It starts with those same waste oils, but processes them using hydrogenation to strip out oxygen atoms. The result? Clean, stable hydrocarbons that behave like jet fuel. It's often called HEFA SPK or HEFA synthetic paraffinic kerosene. It can be blended with traditional jet fuel. That's pretty clever. Same starting point, totally different result. Exactly. And HEFA isn't the only method out there. There's Fischer Tropsch, which uses gasified biomass or waste. So while fame itself doesn't fly, its ingredients still play a key role in the sustainable aviation movement. Bottom line, fame is not sustainable aviation fuel, but the raw materials can still take flight. Okay, Liam, just to recap, fame, biodiesel, and sustainable aviation fuel aren't the same thing, but they can start with the same raw materials, like used cooking oil. That's actually pretty cool. And you mentioned HEFA as one of the main ways to make jet-compatible fuel from waste oils. Can we dive into that a bit more? How exactly does HEFA work, and why is it such a big deal in the aviation world? Sure, Gabby. Let's break down how the HEFA process works. It's a fascinating blend of chemistry and sustainability. HEFA is currently the most commercially mature method for producing sustainable aviation fuel, utilizing feedstocks like used cooking oil. The process begins by reacting the feedstocks with hydrogen under high pressure. This step removes oxygen atoms from the molecules through reactions like hydrodeoxygenation, decarboxylation, and decarbonylation. That sounds really complex, Liam, but what's the outcome? The result is straight-chain hydrocarbons that closely resemble the ones found in traditional jet fuel. To make them more suitable for aviation, they go through isomerization and cracking. These are basically refining steps that improve cold flow properties and stability. So it's all about fine-tuning the fuel to match aviation standards? Absolutely. What's impressive is that HEFA-derived sustainable aviation fuel can be blended with conventional jet fuel up to 50%, but it still meets all aviation safety standards. And get this, it can reduce life cycle greenhouse gas emissions by up to 80% compared to traditional jet fuel. So even though fame biodiesel doesn't make it into the sky, HEFA lets us turn used cooking oil into a high-performance, eco-friendly jet fuel. That's a big step forward for sustainable aviation.